The 2005 death of Joey Jorgusis was quickly labeled an overdose, but in later years reclassified as undetermined after new evidence questioned the initial finding. Tonight, Fox 8's Lee Zurich talks to a third investigator who thinks the death was anything but an overdose. Yes. A legal promise to be honest. That promise made by the roommate of 23-year-old Joey Jorgusis, who died of an alleged drug overdose. How long did you live there with Joey? Um, I think about a year, maybe more, maybe less. It's around, around about a year. Okay, you had a roommate that was that was your roommate. This interview from a deposition, part of a lawsuit filed by Jorgusis's family to get the death reclassified because the family thinks Joey was actually murdered. We accepted our son. If he overdosed, we could live with that. Weeks before Katrina, Joey Jorgusis died in this Lakeview home. Months later, Joey's father received a startling call. Then in about in November, I get a call from an individual and tells me that they heard he was murdered. Jorgusis says he received a few more calls from people saying the same thing. When we heard that, we called the police and asked them to start looking into this as a homicide. That's when Jorgusis reached out to Chuck Losher, an acquaintance, and at the time, a New Orleans police officer. We met at a Burger King and Veterans Boulevard. Losher worked in New Orleans, but had lived in St. Bernard Parish, where Joey Jorgusis was raised. Joe taught my, my older brother karate when he was younger, and, and I lived in the parish for a while, went out up to 17. So and Joe lived in Araby when he was younger. He's, he's a little older than me, but everybody knew Joe. More than a year after Joey's death, Losher, in his capacity as an NOPD detective, interviewed Jerome Carasquillo, Joey's roommate. In that interview, Carasquillo told Losher two now convicted drug dealers murdered Joey. Losher says he then asked Carasquillo to meet with a few more NOPD officers, so he took Carasquillo to the NOPD trailers that served as post-Katrina offices. There, Losher says Carasquillo told the same story. When Jerome left the trailer, when he got outside, he, he asked me, could he talk to me on the side, and said, look, uh, Detective Losher, says, I, I'm scared for my life. I'm giving you all the truth about this story, and I'm afraid they're going to come back and get me. Can you and Mr. Joe get me some kind of protection or help me move out of town for a while uh, to get me some type of witness protection. Do you believe that? I believe that he was scared, yes. He was, he was pale as a ghost. I believe he was scared for his life. Months later, Carasquillo recanted that statement. Was that statement true? No. The reason why? He says pressure by police to make up a story. In this sworn deposition, Carasquillo told a story about how police surrounded him. I've never seen New Orleans police about this before ever. All of a sudden, there's about five or six New Orleans police. There's a piss test, cup sample on the thing. Among the officers interviewing Carasquillo, Losher and former NOPD Captain Tim Bayard. Me and Captain Bayard wouldn't be carrying around uh, piss uh, sample cups. I mean, you know, I've never heard of a policeman carrying piss sample cups in their, their vehicles or anything like that. In the deposition, Carasquillo told Joe Jorgusis' attorney police threatened him. And I'm already on probation. You know, I didn't want to go to jail for anything. So they already threatened, threatened me that I'm going to go to jail and violate my probation because I've been doing drugs with Joey if I don't tell him the truth. And had me in tears pretty much. Pretty much had me in tears, really had me in tears because he would not let me leave until I told him what he wanted to hear. That's uh, right out why. Uh, first of all, we made sure we told them several times, Jerome, you're free to leave anytime you want. You know, we, we didn't want at any time to make him think he was under arrest or anything like that. We said, Jerome, you're free to leave this house anytime you want. You know, he says, no, I want to talk to you. And he began to tell the story. And he also, when he finished the story, said, I'm glad to get this off my chest finally. But more of Carasquillo's sworn testimony during this deposition raises even more questions about his truthfulness. Here's how he described his actions when Joey was discovered unresponsive. I ran in the room, rolled him over, tried to give him CPR, I don't know how to do CPR, just tried blowing his mouth and beating on his chest. 
According to Carasquillo's sworn deposition, this means Joey would have been face up when police arrived. But the responding officer says that's not true. But you're absolutely sure when you walked in, the subject was face down on the bed, had not been rolled over on his back while you were there. Right. Carasquillo also reiterated he performed CPR. Was he foaming at all or anything? No. And so you tried to do CPR? Right, because when I rolled him over, he made like a gag, like a gas in so I thought he was still pretty bad. Again, according to the responding officer, this isn't true. Uh, you did see his mouth. You did see foam coming out of his mouth? Yeah. Did it appear to you at that moment, uh, uh, Sergeant Dupree, that any person in the household had been attempting CPR in the last few minutes prior to your arrival? No, because there was foam in his mouth. No. Okay. In fact, Officer Dupree says Carasquillo wasn't even in the same room with Joey when she arrived at the house. She says he was sitting on the couch in the living room. What was, what was his mannerisms at the time you first observed him? Um, calm. Okay. Uh, were his mannerisms consistent with a person dying in the other room, in your opinion, as a police officer? No. Okay. Uh, did he appear to be in, in distress to you? No. Carasquillo's initial story that two convicted drug dealers murdered Joey matches what Joey's former girlfriend, Jennifer Miller, also told police. I do understand that this is on your own free volition. You can leave it any time you wish. Miller told Losher that morning the two convicted drug dealers went into Joey's room and about 10 minutes later left. Tell me exactly what did he say? They said that they would hurt us. Not to say anything because we would kill you too. So then that something had happened right. to Joey. Right. What did Jerome say? Losher says this story adds credence to the one Carasquillo told. Do you believe the stories that Jennifer Miller and Jerome Carasquillo told? Absolutely. Just uh, their stories were very alike on two different occasions when I interviewed diff on both of them. I think it was three days apart when I interviewed them, and the stories were so similar and so detailed to what they told me that. I really believe this happened in the house. Both Miller and Carasquillo recanted their stories. Why do you think they recanted them? I believe because they were scared for their life. Former Orleans coroner Jeffrey Rouse reclassified Joey's death from an overdose to undetermined. The U.S. Attorney's Office has opened an investigation into the death. Losher is now the third person who investigated the case who told us it probably wasn't a drug overdose. I believe he was murdered, too. Joe Jorgusis has spent millions of dollars hiring investigators and attorneys trying to find out what happened to his son. But look at that smile on that face. August 4th, 2005, the day before his death, Joey told his dad he wanted to move to the North Shore and restart his life. These words, the last ever spoken between a father and son. I said, uh, when Daddy comes home, I'll be home Saturday. We'll sit and talk about it. He said, great, man. You always come through for me. I love you. I said, I love you, too. Again, it is worth noting that no arrests have been made in connection to the death of Joey Jorgusis. We reached out to Jerome Carasquillo multiple times, and he did not respond. When we called Jennifer Miller, Joey's girlfriend at the time, for a comment, she hung up on us. Our investigation continues online. There you can watch all the previous reports in this series, along with extended interviews and statements. It's online now at fox8live.com strangled.